na so for those that have recently joined um yeah open the quick reference um to the side of the screen so uh, you can watch the commands and also use it as a reference later on um yeah so let's start with the basic um scalar types that are supported by um yamo so it can end in yml or yml um like we said um so yeah you can um specify uh, any a number type and give it a one to three um you could specify again a second number um give it a five six um you could also specify strings um with s1 as abc it can be double quotes um single quotes or um or no quotes as well um and you can also specify uh boolean values uh for example as false uh yeah and there are also date types and other um types which are supported by yaml uh, right uh so we can go to um yaml collections which are yeah co collections of data types um you're becoming familiar with python even those um that are recently that are new to programming so um collections can be um for example a list can have a collection of uh, one or more of this scalar variables um so we can have a collections.yaml um which for example let's say um we would like to store um the list of uh the list of the trainees that are here right um so to store the list of uh trainees um we could simply have uh so let's say we have johannes um um we have johannes um so let's create a trainees object and have johannes uh um no visa um uh, so this yeah so we could we could store it like this different variables and um we can uh yeah so this this would this would actually um this would actually be an object um but a list of each of these objects would be um, then specified using this. And so this is um, indentation specific, um, like Python, and this would um, be able to store again other variables. So we have this list of trainees and um, Johannes can, um, yeah, so we have this trainees and Johannes can also have other properties um, which are attached to him. So some, so like, um, I think definitely the structure that I've gone through here is not correct. Um, so probably when we talk about trainees, um, we would be talking about um, a list of trainees, each with individual properties, right? So I think let's start with the name that would be given to one trainee. Um, and this next one would represent another trainee, right? So we'd have another, we'd have the name representing Johannes. Um, yeah uh another name representing uh um and also another uh name maybe representing Ken, right and um each of these trainees would also have other um attributes attached to them other than the name uh so maybe the age um this is just a random number, 120, um, and each of them would have uh, an age associated um, with them, right? So we're, we're, this is a, we're storing a data structure here, um, which has different attributes as associated with um, each of the trains. Um, and they can have grades and they can have um, multiple things that are associated uh, that, that are associated with the trainees. And it allows us to convert this into, uh, serialize this and allows uh, 
direct transfer um, between a receiver and a sender of this data. Um, yeah, so um, we can actually visualize this data um, using Python to really, cla to really clarify um, the data structure at the moment. So um, let's create a Python file. Um, let's create an environment. Um, this is an alternative to, um, so this is an alternative to the Conda installation that we saw early on. So we can create a virtual environment for this. Um, I think let me let a couple of for any. Okay, so is that a question? Is the human um, friendly data serialization language for all programming languages? We sometimes need to transfer over the network. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So um, we can parse uh, we can parse YAML YAML files and um, use them in our Python program, uh, and we can um, we can do that using the PyYAML package. Uh, so let's install PyYAML. Um, yeah. And so once that is uh, once that is installed, um, okay. So let's actually activate um, the environment that we created previously, and uh, so we have this collection objects. I think let's actually turn this into grade. That makes more sense. Um, yeah, so 100, everyone got 100, um, but Kelly, um, let's give her an 89. Um, okay, so we have this collection of the YAML file, and um, so this is, um, this is an object or a dictionary um, which contains a list of trainees which have um, their own attributes. Um, and so let us see this collections.yaml file, um, let's read it as stream. Um, and so we have this yaml.load, uh, yaml.safeload actually, um, which, act, which allows us to load our yaml files into memory. Um, yeah. And so we would get the collections.yaml and allows us to see it clearly in our um, in our file. So as you can see here, um, I think let's make it uh, prettier and different uh, dot. Okay, so. So I think this, you can see here, we have this dictionary object, um, which has trainees within it, and which has a list of all the trainees and all the attributes that are attached to them. So this allows us to specify our data in a format which was um, really readable uh, to human eyes. Um, for example, those who've used XML um, or any other data serialization language, um, some of them are, some of them, um, some of them are 
uh, are really hard to read, um, like XML, um, and some of them also um, are really um, storage intensive. Um, and so this, um, and so YAML really provides us with a lot of um, advantages providing this um, this data serialization. Um, yeah, and so yeah, this is definitely one essential part of the um, DevOps CI CD pipeline. And once we go through other codes and see GitHub Actions um, Docker, um, we'll really see um, the usefulness of it. Um, okay, so so um, yeah, okay, yeah. That's, that's it about uh, YAML. Um, definitely go through the, sh the cheat sheet and um, and really uh, identify the commands. Okay, so uh, your screen is dark. Um, okay, so I think let me change the team. Uh, preferences, color team. So yeah, I've changed the team of my VS Code, and it's, it would definitely it would be clear uh, for our next demo. Um, indent for is just um, specifying the indentation of uh, the objects, just to allow us to uh, see it, see it more clearly. Um, okay, so I think that's that's it about YAML. Uh, and so let me share a document um, that all of us can actually see um ci and academy think. editor okay so yeah i've shared a google doc link um in the chat um and so i like i like everyone to jump in um, into the document, and so let's assume that we are, um, yeah, we are a good farmer, um, and we have this really brilliant idea to sell our goods, um, and so we're building um, an e-commerce platform um, to sell the goods, and um, let's see, we're brainstorm, we're that, we're that good farmer, and um, we're brainstorming features. Um, that we're actually going to include in our um, e-commerce platform. And so like everyone go in and write any of the features that actually come to mind, like um, maybe displace goods, um, offers rewards, um, and, a and a machine learning recommendation system. Um, yeah, I'd like everyone to write any of the features that actually pop in their mind. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, um, use separate lines if people are. Yeah. Any features that come to mind? Um, I think I. Yeah, so yeah, um, remember we're a goat farmer and yeah, like we can sell books about goats, okay, that still can work, but um, yeah, try to stay within the business domain. Um, we're a goat farmer, we sell goats and we want um, different features for um, the new e-commerce app we're developing to sell our goods, right? Uh, 
um, for Adijat, um, yeah, so we're, yeah, we're a growth farmer and we're, we want, we're building an e-commerce um, site to sell goods and maybe even more features, but um, yeah, uh, we're trying to build a brand. And so we're listing the features that come to mind at the moment. Um, yeah, so good dish recipes. Um, cart, demographic information, good feed. This production prediction system, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so everyone write your ideas and yeah, it's at 25, um, yeah, write your ideas. Um, and we can proceed to the next one. Uh, yeah, I think we have a lot of features. Okay, so everyone in the document can see it, but I think let me share my let me share my screen if people can see it as well um, who are not inside. Yeah, so as you can see, people are coming up with ideas. This is really good idea. This is great ideas. Like got leather, um, got breed, uh, got dish re recipes, um, land analysis, most sold. Um, there is the cart suggestion of new products, shipping order, um, store management, um, paying, uh, buying, login, purchase. Um, and so as you can see, um, this are, there are a lot of features that can come to mind, right? Um, and these features are really endless. I, I just gave you like around five minutes to think about um, a couple of features, but um, this list can definitely go on, right? Um, and so if you were that goat farmer, um, implementing all of these features would take a lot of time, right? Um, definitely like, building an e-commerce site that could actually do all of these things um, might take you, let's say, um, just a random estimate of maybe six months to a year, right? Um, and within that six months, a lot of things can happen, right? Um, so you want to, let's say, as that farmer, you want to implement all of these features and you want to start your product, you want to launch your e-commerce application when all of these features are implemented. And that comes with a lot of disadvantages. Um, I think maybe if one person can tell me some of the disadvantages that they think, like waiting to finish all of these features, um, what do you think, what, what bad thing do you think can happen um, if you actually wait to finish all of these features? Um, yes, Abner, can you not see my screen? Your shared screen is not visible. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So product takes a long time to ship. Yes, um, yes, one group. Um, product will definitely take a long time to ship. Um, and because it takes a long time to ship, um, another goat farmer, which had um, a similar idea, for example, um, the idea to actually just sell sheep online um, could come in, implement just that feature in a couple of days, launch that product and um, take all of our customer base, right? Um, and so doing that would really leave us to a, to a disadvantage because we've we're spending time and effort um, into building a product um, which users have already been taken by somebody else. Um, and so that is when um, an MVP really comes uh, into play. So let me share um, a Wikipedia link here, um, which is a minimum viable product, right? So you'd want to start off with with launching, yeah. Uh, so I can go to the 
Wikipedia page. Um, so an MVP is just a version of the product with just enough features to be usable by early customers, right? So for the first thing, for example, for from my perspective, from someone who just wants to sell um, their goods to customers which are outside the, my range of area, I would probably just want um, a feature where someone can just go in, um, pick a good that they want, um, put in their credit or debit card information, and then just purchase that good, right? And so that might be just the feature which would allow me to launch. Um, and so that would mean that my MVP would launch really soon and we would be able to have access, uh, we would be able to tap into that customer base um, as quickly as possible. Um, and so with this, uh, with this concept of an MVP, um, yeah, with this concept of an elf and MVP, um, that is when where our CI and CD pipeline really comes into play and um, and really allows us to to see what to iterate through our product and um, really ship uh, ship features continuously, right? Um, so continuously add features into our product um, and keep our, keep our, keep our customers happy. Um, okay. So, um, where is this? Yeah. So, um, and this blog, this, um, this blog from Synopsis really shows the CI CD pipeline, right? Where there is this planning that goes on. Um, there is the code um, that we write, there is the build, there is this continuous testing so that um, our product does not break um, in the middle of deployment. Um, and there is the release of the new products um, and you deploy it, right? So in, in our case, in, in, in this project's case, um, you're going to be deploying a dashboard at the end of the week, right? And so that would probably be your initial release because um, you'd be releasing the version one of it. If you plan to continue, add, to continue adding features on it, you'd iterate through this process, um, through this process of um, continuously planning, building, releasing and deploying and really monitoring it. And so this CI CD cycle um, is what, when, what we're talking about when we talk about the dev and the loss pipelines, right? Um, and so if we go to the quick start and not, and just the definition of, um, the initial definition of GitHub Actions, um, we can clearly read from there what it, what it provides for us. I'm not sure if it's my connection. Uh, yeah, so what it does is it just allows us, it gives us a single place where um, within our code, within, within the place where our code is selected, it allows us to test, um, use GitHub issues for planning, um, build using GitHub actions, um, and deploy to uh, release and deploy to wherever platform um, we are deploying our dashboard to, um, and also allow us to operate and monitor using um, maybe automated tasks which are scheduled um, and also whatnot. So it provides this entire, uh, it provides an, um, it provides an entire clear CI CD pipeline. It's a platform which allows us um, yeah, so it automates, customizes, and executes your software development workflows um, right within GitHub. Um, and so let's just go over the quick start. So the quick start is right here. So we can create a repo um, and a workflow. Um, Repo. Yeah. 
So let's create a repository where we would be able to see um, GitHub Actions in action, um, right? Um, so I think you can see my my screen. Uh, is this more visible than the previous one? Oh. Doesn't seem so for me, but I think let's go on. Um, so let's have them side by side and. Yeah, so um, we can, yeah, we can keep this. Um, so what we start is, uh, so the workflow, how we start our workflow is we create a drop GitHub folder, um, which within within has a workflows, workflows directory, um, and we create that YAML file, which is a step-by-step -step description and um, a, a data format for um, executing various commands uh, within GitHub Action servers. So this actions can be um, simply, in this case, just echoing out um, or displaying um, various outputs. But um, in your case, um, it would be um, executing that unit test that you learned about um, in this morning. So. It is just like executing various commands um, on an instance, on an Ubuntu instance in this case. Right. So let's give it the same name on uh, GitHub Actions demo.yaml. And so we have, have this YAML file, right? So this YAML file, um, is simply just doing on every push into GitHub that you do. Um, it is using an Ubuntu instance, um, an Ubuntu virtual machine, and it is running the steps. It is just echoing that this job was automatically triggered by some event, um, and etc. Right. Um, so let's go into the repo that we were using. Um, add the remote here um, and yeah so let's add this github workflows file into github because we need that to be to actually be tracked and to actually executing github server right um so get add dot github Workflows slash have actions demo or yaml. Um, so let's commit. Um, I um, workflow file and let's just push it together. Right. Okay. So. Within here, um, our CI is then supposed to go into GitHub servers and um, run this specific files, um, which are just commands, um, which are just echoing, right? Um, place the new branch. Yeah, we've pushed to main, and so um, our action should already have run. If we go to the Action section. Um, ah, okay. So, yeah, I definitely made a mistake here when I added uh, the repo. I added the repository outside of. Where am I? The Amin CI tutorial, right? Ah, okay, so I added the repository, I think it was in. So it's Tanak Workflow CI tutorial. 
dog github so the dog github should have been it's outside of that directory um, what are they do the dog github um, we can we can move this one directory we can move this to go one directory back right um so we can move all of this to go one back um and we can check the git status um Have it here. We have the workflows here. Um, and let's just go. Since this is a limited time tutorial, let's go into here and just create it right here. Like if we can create a folder right here on GitHub. Um, for files. Let's just upload it from our local folder. Did I move it? Status. Oh, this is dot um, GitHub. Um. I think let's let's definitely start from scratch. Uh, and let's let's create a repo from scratch and go over it again. Uh, my directory wasn't really clean where I started off, so it is uh, let's make sure we don't have any git instance here. So Let's create a new repo. Right. Uh, um, yeah, uh, Tanak flow two. Um, let's keep it public and yeah. Mm. Okay, so let's create a new repository from there. Origin name. Let's open this one. Um, and let's go over the same process that we went through prior to this. Um, Right. Okay, and let's copy this one. And let's add the dot github workflows file 
which we now have we now have the actions file tracked um, and we can push it from the biceps folder which we've created on um ah, okay so we have it added uh file Hmm. And so if we go now into the second, into this repo that we have, the workflow should be running and we should see the outputs. So this is the actions, uh, the actions that has been triggered and the specific workflow that we've um, specified in our YAML file. Yeah, and so if you go into the actions, and you can debug it here, and so there are many other tools, which many other CI/CD tools like um, Travis CI for continuous integration that allows us to run our tests periodically. So when we roll out new features, um, it would it would allow to run those tests automatically. Um, so maybe if you're working in a team, if 10 people are contributing to the same code, um, those 10 people might be breaking things um, while they go along. And so automatically running the tests um, really has benefits. But um, yeah, using separate tools like Travis CI, Travis CI, Circle CI, um, you'd have to go into, uh, into places where um, your code base is not um, currently written, right? So, yeah, so these are the various commands we actually specified in our YAML file. And um, as you can see in our actions, um, this is where you can, um, you can explore the logs um, and see if any steps that, that actually were run um, ended up in an error. And also if you actually want to maybe um, also see an output um, when someone, um, you usually wouldn't work um, in main. Um, so yeah, you see that all checks have passed and um, each of the steps were properly run. So you could, you could make sure that the main branch is actually locked. And so uh, whenever you make new features, um, the tests are actually um, run from other branches. So there are many, um, there are many options that you can pass um, on push to a specific branch maybe, um, or either on pull request. Um, and so there are, there are definitely uh, lots of examples and lots of um, things you can do with GitHub Actions based on your use case. And I'll uh, leave the link um, to GitHub Actions here below for the quick start. Um, and one thing that you can do um, using that is um, also running your tests, running the tests that you're supposed to cover. Um, so let's also go to the quick start from PyTest. Uh, okay, so let me create. Uh, I go to our environment. Um, yeah, I also still created a repo in the wrong directory in an unclean directory here at the moment. Um, but don't mind, don't follow the bad practices that I'm currently doing. So let's install PyTest. Um, and so yeah, what so what this would allow us to do would be to automatically run our tests um, whenever changes were made. And so each part, each um, particular part of the CI CD pipeline can actually be automated um, using GitHub Actions.
to activate the environment. Yeah, so we can go on with this one. So that finishes the sample.py. Um, yeah, and I think you, you've definitely gone through a rigorous um, unit testing uh, tutorial prior to this. So can you share us doc? Just help me. Yeah, I've, I've shared the documentation. Um, also, the quick ref for the other materials that we need. Um, okay, so, Um, yeah, so while it's installing, I think we can uh, go over the PyTest workflow. Um, so yeah, you just create another file, um, another actions. Uh, we can call this actions maybe unit tests.yaml, uh, which would simply just execute the commands that we're um, going to be executing in PyTest, right? So when we run PyTest, when we run the PyTest command, we're expecting um, this tests to pass. Um, and so in this um, unit tests.yaml. Uh, would also be writing the similar commands to actually um, test our file, right? So let's copy this same actions uh, and give it a, un a unique name, or uh, let's say run tests, and it runs on push. Um, and the jobs that it has, um, it, it is, uh, run unit test. Yeah, so it runs on Ubuntu latest, right? Um, so this this workflow wouldn't be as easy as just running uh, the echo command, right? Um, so this, ha this has particular steps and it uses um, another package which we would, we would need to actually get our code base if we are to run, um, if we are to run tests on our code base, um, and so this relies on another actions, um, which is um, already, which already exists. So you just have to specify the action name. Um, it, it, it's sort of you can think of this sort of as an inheritance, um, where it is relying on prior. Um, workflows to complete this workflow, right? Um, and so uh, this could have a name, uh, and we would need Python to actually run our workflow because um, because it's actually uh, a Python workflow, and we're running uh, a specific Python test. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think uh, I can copy a code snippet um, from elsewhere. Um, yeah. So copy. Um, yeah. So I think just 
walking through the code snippet would be a better, a better thing. Yeah, so we'd have a Python installation uh, where this is just um, installing Python 3. Um, this is installing pip and we would like to install requirements. And so as you have seen, what I've gone through here is installing PyTest. Um, and so our virtual machine, which is also running, um, which is also running this workflow, um, needs to needs to have PyTest, uh, which we'll specify in the requirements .txt file um, and add PyTest there. Um, yeah, and so the run test cases, um, in the run test cases command, we would simply just be able to run PyTest. Um, so if it works in our local environment, um, the same specified steps should also um, work in our remote environment. Um, yeah, so let's first try out PyTest in our local environment. Uh, PyTest version. Going through the going to the quick start the getting started page of PyTest. Um, yes, yeah, so we have PyTest installed and PyTest um, runs our okay, so I think uh, one error in Twitter, test exactly the same. Okay. Um, yeah. So it is getting this files as well, which are the files that let's delete them for now. Um, So yeah, so it is running this test sample uh, sample.py and it is um, it is seeing that the assertion um, is not correct and it is and it is failing, right? Um, so why why is it failing? It's running this func of three um, and it is checking if it if it is equal to five but three plus one is not equal to five, right? So if we run func of four, um, this test now now passes. And so we have this test script that is um, running each of each of these workflows. And this unit test.yaml file um, is supposed to run this pytest command um, on GitHub servers and show us the show us all the messages and um, the test cases that are that are created from this. Uh, so um, yeah, so let's let's see which files we haven't tracked. Yeah, we haven't tracked unit tests.yaml, um, the requirements.txt and the test sample.py. So let's add those files. Um, uh, so, get add test. Let's go and sign uh, CI uh, adds unit tests the YAML. And so, this is actually a code snippet I actually haven't tested. And this is basically the workflow that you actually follow. As you saw, I ran into a lot of errors. Um, you go and debug, uh, and you, you actually come back. And so really this pushing and um, seeing your changes, um, let me present my entire screen because we're gonna have to go back to GitHub. Um, yeah, so I think you can see my entire screen. Yeah, so this really going back and forth, um, really debugging, seeing what's wrong, um, is really where all the learning happens. 
Um, and when we're use, utilizing GitHub Actions, definitely um, pushing every change and seeing if your YAML files um, aren't correct um, is really difficult. So YAML uh, online parser, leave. Um, there are online resources which allow you to check the indentation of, uh, and check whether your YAML file is um, really correct. Uh, so this, this is not it. Um, yeah, I think I'll share the link on Slack. Um, and also uh, this uh, GitHub Act, uh, GitHub Actions repo, uh, which is, yeah, which is this one, which allows you to run the GitHub Actions um, locally. I don't have it currently on my instance, which makes it hard to see. So we'd have to go to um, the GitHub repo and uh, see the actual new action that actually happened. Um, and so our second flow does also trigger on push. Um, and so if all goes well, we should have the requirements installed PyTest and run that test and actually pass. If not, we'll see some error, uh, we'll, which we'll have to go into the actions and debug. Uh, so this is saying all good, yeah. So this run tests um, took 16 seconds to run, um, and those specific those specific tests were um, taken, which we'll see in the details. Sorry about the connection; it's very slow. Um, So yeah, so that was the, the steps that were specified in this YAML file uh, are the steps that are run. So we just installed Python, we installed pip. Um, in the requirements, we had specified that we would want to, in, we'd want to include PyTest. And so it installed what were found in the requirements and it ran the test cases. Uh, so it's run test sample.py, which the code had actually been fixed locally and it passed the test. And so uh, the advantage of this would really happen if you are working in a team where everyone is making a lot of changes to the code base and you'd want, um, you'd want to assert that that function for equals four, right? So let's say that is one core part of your application and that always has to work. Um, and so that test, written into the core part of the, of the application would always be run when everyone makes this code changes and everyone would be able to then see um, that for is always for and that that is that that test that that specific functionality um, is always working um, yeah and yeah, so that's about it from my end. Um, and yeah, definitely this might take time to internalize if you're new to DevOps, but going through this cycle of iteration, um, utilizing GitHub's uh, full potential um, from the get-go and um, yeah, using GitHub Actions to test your code um, is one thing that is expected um, from this works project. Um, yeah, and I think this is uh, one flow that's, yeah, thank you, Andy. Um, yeah, and an extension to actually validate your YAML files. Um, yeah, so if there are any questions, uh, I'm more than happy to answer that. So no one has any questions. Um, yeah. So I'm assuming everything is either very very clear or um, nothing. Nothing is clear. Uh, 
so um so is everything clear uh like if everything's clear raise your hands if you can and if you're here and still stuck through the tutorial yeah okay so yeah um i'm happy everything is clear um if uh if you have any questions uh, within this tutorial you can hit me up on slack i'll be more than happy to answer that yeah so thank you everyone uh, have a good rest of your day Just in your turn in the middle. Um, uh, well, what did you see, Thomas? Is that a question? Sorry, I was I'm busy again. Uh, I was raising my hand, but uh, <laughs> let yeah. me ask you one thing. Uh, yeah, is there something I miss the configuration <laughs> file? How GitHub access or identify the YAM? Yam a yam mol file in the repo. Um, yeah. So what you use the yaml file is. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, let me carry my question. Now uh, GitHub automatically identifies the yaml file. Ah. Okay. So yeah. Um. So you're building a workflow. Um. Using that yaml file, right? So. It is a default. You have to put it in the dog GitHub um, slash workflows folder. So your YAML files have to be located there for GitHub to. Oh, okay. So the the, the the directory is just constant. Yeah, yeah. So okay. um, yeah, um, that was actually the mistake that I made. I was in the wrong directory um, initially. Um, okay. So that that has to be, yeah that has to be specific. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Bye, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording.